Bill, when we met with you at Story Expo 2014, you talked about your job at Safeway in the yeah. warehouse. And you had a plan B, it sounds like. Should other people have a plan B? Or maybe that wasn't what, really a plan. the day job? It was just... No, the, day, just, the day job was because you got to pay the bills. And, you know, that was, that was never the plan B. That was, that was, okay. that was the, you know, you got to do something to pay the bills. But, but I think that that's important to have your, have the bills covered. Because if you're, this is the weirdest part about being a screenwriter is you don't know where your next check is coming from or if it's ever coming. And when I sold the script... Uh, that got to Paramount that got me to Los Angeles in the first place, I had two years of warehouse pay and I ate it up, basically doing nothing, no networking, no nothing. And so by as that money was running out, I was like, I need to sell a script tomorrow. And I think that that panic is not good for your writing that if you're writing something, there's a great scene in Sunset Boulevard where uh, Joe Gillis, our screenwriter hero, um, goes into Mr. Sheldrake, who is the only person on the lot, the Paramount lot that likes his writing and is trying to, is trying to pitch this baseball story and uh, says that, you know, um, I sent you the, the treatment, you guys read it, you know, uh, I, I 20th Century Fox is really hot on this, but I can't just, I just can't see Alan Ladd playing this character, whatever the deal is. And so he brings in um, the, uh, the, the script reader and she looks at her coverage and she said, this is the, a terrible thing, it's, all, it's a terrible script. She just basically shreds his story in front of him. And then says, she says, this was written from hunger. This is somebody that was desperate to find work, not somebody that was writing from their heart. And I think that ends up being a problem with a lot of people is you can, Los Angeles is an expensive place to live. Um, and s screenwriting is a hit and miss job that people think that I'm going to write me a script, get me one of the million dollar checks and, you know, find me an underwear model. And that's not the way it works. What it works is you come here and you're Joe Gillis. You're the guy that, you know, the... Uh, the uh, finance agency wants to repo your car. You know, you're, you're living in a crappy, you know, apartment someplace writing, and that's the beginning of your career. If that, if you have a finite amount of money, if you go, I quit my job and I have this much money, when it gets to the end of that money, you stop writing from the heart and you start writing from the, I need to make money. And then you become the, you write the hack that has no passion, that has no soul to it, and it's crap and people can read it and it's crap. So the plan B thing, which it w really isn't plan B, but it's something that's gonna pay the bills so that you can then focus on writing the script. So, you know, in your, in your off time, I think last time I talked about the, you know, page a day ends up being th three scripts. So in your, that time before work or whatever, you're not, the stress is off. I'm not, I don't have to write this script to pay the rent that's due at the end of the month instead I'm doing the stupid day job that's paying the rent. And if you can find a good, if you're living in Los Angeles, there are stupid day jobs that are great day jobs. And what you should do is look at ways that you can get in the business from the side door. And I uh, did a script tip on this a couple of days ago about uh, the, the people that luck out in the business. I have a friend of mine, damn it, who was a personal assistant to a movie star, and damn it if he didn't use those connections to sell a script. Guess what? That guy was a screenwriter who needed a day job, became the dog walker, laundry picker-upper, all that stuff for a movie star, and probably got, you know, paid crap money, but made connections. Um, you can be the you can be a reader, although a lot of those are going to intern. Um, you can be a a dog walker. I know, you know, this is this the, the horror story that I know is I know a guy who's a limo driver and never wanted to be a screenwriter or a film producer, except now he's a film producer because as a limo driver, you pick up movie stars. And when you pick up movie stars, you end up with all their with connections. And so he basically took a bunch of movie stars that he picked up in his limo, put them into a package, found a script, took it to a, a real producer, and basically now he's a movie producer. And you go, that, you know, that's outrageous. But think about as you're the, the, the struggling screenwriter. If you're going to look for a day job, don't find the day job that gets you no connections. Find the day job that gives you some connections. Um, 
although I would not suggest being a, a set PA because you work 12 hours, um, that's in parentheses or quotes, air quotes, only because 12 hours plus however much they get you, you know, but th that's, there's no time to write. But you can be an office PA and basically work eight hours in an office and do film set work. You know, you're doing things, you're making copies of scripts, you're doing all kinds of stuff that puts you in contact with the director, the actors, etc. So find, if you're here in Los Angeles looking for the day job, find the day job that gets you in. And you know, there's, there's plenty of day jobs out there that can do that.